Almighty Father, you love your children as a man loveth his friend. You are concerned about them. You brought up this program for the singles so they might be taught on marriage. They might be prayed for that you might open the door of marriage for them. God, we have started. The message you say I should tell them is what I'm going to do now. Follow the message and save your people. Bless your people. Deliver your people. Make them joyful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, we are taking the message the danger of marrying wrongly. The danger of marrying wrongly. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, from verse 1 to verse 4. The Bible says, Queen the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Gagashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, even, I mean, seven nations, greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them, and utterly destroy them, Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me. That they may serve other gods, so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. This was instruction God gave to the children of Israel even before they went into the land of Canaan to possess it. He told them, these people that you are going to possess their land are evil people. They did evil continually from generation to generation until I, the creator, saw that their evil had come up for a memorial. Their evil had mounted up to the heavens. And their evil had come to the stage of annihilation to clear them out from the land. So, I'm driving them out. But you will come. Some of them might still be there because my walk will be gradual among you. I might not drive them away all together at once because the wild animals might fill up their places 
and hurt your life. But I will be driving them little by little. Please don't make agreement with them. They are idol worshippers. They don't know me, the creator. Don't marry their daughters, however beautiful and intelligent they are. They are a property of Satan. Don't take their sons for your daughters. Don't allow your daughters to marry them. He was speaking to the children of Israel. A people he was bringing up to spread upon the earth by righteousness. Don't marry their daughters. Don't allow them to marry your daughters. If your sons marry them, see, they will turn away your sons. From me, that they will not serve me again. And I will be provoked for that and destroy you utterly. So that is what the Lord told them. Don't do it. Some heard what the Lord said. Some did not obey. In 1 Kings chapter 11, what the Lord said happened to King Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11, chapter verse 1 to verse 4. But King Solomon loved many strange women. The people the Lord said, don't marry them. People of other nations, they're strangers. Don't marry them. King Solomon, because he loved women, he was a backslider. He loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, women of the, Moab of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely, they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto this in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. Can we read verse 4 together? One, two, go. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. Can you see? And in verse 5, for Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after his Lord, as did David his father. Why? He did what God said the children of Israel should not do. Don't marry them. That is God. You can't be wiser than God. Definitely, he might have thought, I will bring them into the land of Israel. 
and make them to serve the living God. Some of them will deceive you and, and really agree. I will serve your God. But when they come in, they will serve their own gods. They can obey you for a little while and serve their own gods. Some, as today, will say, I believe I will convert her. I will believe I will bring her to the church and she will hear the word of God and change. That is you talking. You are not wiser than God. It shall come to pass that at the time appropriate, that unbeliever will take you over. You will not be able to stand to say you will, uh, you will play wisdom. So, marrying wrongly the danger of it. I'm going to give you the reason why um, I want to give you what is meant by marrying wrongly. I'm going to give you seven ways of marrying wrongly. Number one, marrying an unbeliever. You see what the, De the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 says in verse 1 to verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1 to 4. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land where thou goest to possess it and had cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Gargashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Can you see here? He said, don't marry them. The, don't exchange marriage with the hidden, the pagans, the unbelieving nations, the idol worshippers. Let nothing connect you with them. In the New Testament, this is scripture that is like chapter 6 I read verse 14 to verse 16 be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what, co what communion hath light with darkness and what concord had Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believed, believed with an infidel? And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 17, wherefore? Come out from among them and be ye separate. See the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. See, here the Bible tells us that a child of God is righteousness. While the unbeliever is unrighteousness. A child of God is Christ belongs to Jesus is as Christ and a child of, of the devil is Belial belongs to Belial which is Satan again the Bible says that a child of God is the temple of God where God dwells while a child of Satan 
is idol where the idol is planted so there should be no agreement there should be no marriage between a believer and unbeliever that means therefore don't marry Muslims don't marry a Muslim for no reason don't say I will convert her is God who created that Muslim God who created you says because you are my child I have received you don't marry a Muslim don't marry a pagan that's what the Lord is saying don't marry a person that is not a believer even if that person is worshipping in the same church with you even if that person is in a denomination that you approve that they're doing well don't marry him don't marry her except it is proved clearly you have investigated well that that person is a believer don't that is what the lord is saying he is unbeliever so marrying wrongly is marrying an unbeliever again number two it is ma not marrying in god's will marrying wrongly it means you have not married by the direction of god by the guidance of god by the will of god look at it in the book of jeremiah chapter 23 verse 32 jeremiah 23 verse 32 the bible says behold i am against them that prophesy false dreams see the lord and do tell them and cause my people to hear by their lies and by their lightness yet i sent them not nor commanded them therefore they shall not profit these people at all saith the lord don't formulate dream and say the lord has led you to a person that is not a christian not born again don't formulate dream god does not give that type of dream let no another person come to you and say the lord revealed to me that that person is your husband don't take that when such a person is not a true believer don't take that so why if you marry such a person it shall not profit you at all if you marry such a woman she shall not profit you at all that is what god is saying because god is not involved in the matter god is not involved in the matter if you say you dream a dream or else somebody dreamed a dream and told you the bible says god speak it once and yeah twice he speak it god speaks and the bible says from the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every man matter be established which means one dream is not enough in fact even two dreams may not be enough there are various ways that the lord will want you to prove that dream dreamed by you or dreamed by another person see gideon needed to prove the will of god when he said lord if you are the one talking to me i am going to lay a blanket on the ground let the total ground all the ground run about be dry but let there be water in this blanket 
water coming from the dews of the night. And in the morning, he really saw everywhere dry. And he raised the blanket. It was full of water. And he squeezed the water, filling a bowl. And it surprised him. But what if it is a chance? What if somebody had my prayer with the Lord and came and poured this thing, poured water on this? You know, the devil can do, can do some funny things. So, God, I'm going to lay the fleece again. Let there be no water in the fleece. But let there be water, dews, falling all around the fleece. The following morning he came. The fleece, the fleece was dry. The blanket was dry. But everywhere it was as if it rained over the night. Ah, ah, this thing. So, God, you are really telling me remaining a paid witness. The Lord knew that Gideon was still not satisfied. Make sure you check up. The reason why Gideon was incessant in getting the mind of God, making sure he was being led by God, was because the people, the Midianites he was going to fight, were like the, were like the sand in the seashore. But God has given him only 300 people to go and face a crowd of army that is like the sun in the seashore. Meaning one soldier might end up facing a, a thousand soldiers. Even more than that. Then, if I'm not really very clear about the mind of God, about the voice of God, about the directive of God, about the will of God, I and my people shall not come back alive very surely. That is why he was checking on this. And when God knew he wanted more certainty, he said, go down to the camp of the Philistines, um, of the Midianites. I am going to make you hear something. He went in the night near the camp of the, um, of the Midianites. One was telling a dream to his fellow. That's a third witness. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, get, make sure you get yourself sure. Let every matter then be confirmed. The man was telling his fellow, I have just dreamed that a cake of barley bread rolled down from the camp of Gideon into the camp of the Midianites. And we were like, date me. Then Gideon knew the Lord has given them the battle. The Lord has given them victory. He went with courage and ordered his people, let's move. The reason why you must check over and over is because Marriage is a graveyard. Marriage is the den, is a den of the lions. Marriage is a place of accident and bruises, wounds. Marriage is a place of shame. If it is not God that leads you there, you will not know peace. You may not go to heaven. Your life will be destabilized. That is why you say he's saying, check up again. Ask advice again. Ask counsel. Go to God in prayer again. If the person is yours, nobody will take her. Ah, if you're living and somebody else will come and take her, not by God. Nobody will take her. Because if the Lord has preserved her for you, nobody will take her. No, not anyone. So, check up well. So, wrong marriage is marrying outside God's will. Yes, it's marrying an unbeliever. And again, it's marrying out of due time. Marrying out of due time. You know, the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 3 to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven a time to be born a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck, 
pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. Verse, verse 4, even to 6, I mean even to 7. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sue. A time to keep, to keep silence and a time to speak. Again, verse 8, a time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. A time to marry and a time not to marry. Now, there are people who marry prematurely at the age of 12, at the age of 13, at the age of 14. That is not the time of marriage. It's not going to give you the pleasure of marriage because you don't know what it is. You don't understand what it is. And so you can't do it well. You will suffer many injuries. Many, many injuries. A particular lady said, who was married to one of her brothers uh, in the 80s, she said, when the marriage cut out, and up to today, they are divorced, and the man has married another woman. I don't know what is of her now in, in this uh, later time. But she said, when I met her, how many years after the marriage, after the, the marriage of, that they got married in 1987, I preached, I think I preached in that marriage in 1987. Uh, but then, she said, the man married me too early. I was just, is it 17 years old? When I married. So I didn't understand marriage. I didn't have a responsibility, a sense of responsibility. That's why I gave him much problem. But that suppose he came to get married to me at this period, wonderful. He would have gotten a wonderful wife because my understanding now is mature. So, don't accept when your parents give you out in marriage at such tender age. Don't accept when your parents bring a wife to you at such tender age. It's wrong. Don't. It is not a time to marry. But that does not also say because you're married at 12, 13, 14, it is not marriage. As long as your parental consent had been given, and you went to the man, and the man slept with you, marriage has been contracted, and you can't break it again. You have become one soul. You say, oh, but I didn't know the days of ignorance. Your own case is in the day of ignorance. But this also is an instruction to young men and young women. There is a time, people are coming to you for marriage. You smell well for marriage, for marriage as a lady don't bring up pride to reject people at that time just for your pride don't say no 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 oh you man it is time for you to marry and you are not bothering it might be too late in your life you may not find one again or you may just become uh, maybe it's peer part. You may become, uh, what do we call it? Belgium. Or this, this Belgian part. Or they call it what? What does that mean? Do they call it uh, Tukumbo? Uh, because, because at the time you were attractive, at the time you were smelling marriage, people wanted to marry you. You spend time in pride. 
Not that the Lord didn't tell you to accept. And not that the Lord told you to accept. But even you were sure this man was led by God. This man was led by God. There's a story of a young man. Jesus came to this young man and said, because of the ministry I have given to you, I don't want you to marry anyhow. Now that I have visited you, I, I will leave you. When I leave, the woman I will want you to marry will come in. That is the woman I want you to marry. So, after this is a practical reality and truth. After Jesus conversed with him and uh, demonstrated his power over him, he left. As Jesus left, the woman, two sisters came to visit him. One is the woman the Lord wanted him to marry. He knew, the, he knew her, but said nothing to that woman. A time came, the woman knew that God is leading me to this young man. In fact, when he, she waited and waited, the young man was not talking. He even came to the young man and said, uh, somebody else is trying to marry me, but I'm not feeling led to that person. To know whether this person will stand up and do something. Pride. Covert him. Jesus told you. And eventually he missed that woman. Where will you find successful ministry? You miss the person God wants you to marry. Stubbornness. So, there's time to marry. Yield yourself to God. Don't say there's no money. If you mean business, you will get money. If you mean business, you will get the money. God will give you the money. God will cause human beings to give you the money. God will open opportunities for you to work out the money. But you are careless. As you are careless, you might miss your time of marriage and come to be grubbing and be marrying second hand. And the joy of enjoying something of your heart is no more there. Because now you are just patching up. Who again? Who again? There's no time. There's no, I can't find another person. Who can I find? Who, is there anybody there? At the time they bring food to you, to eat, you shut pride. Now you're looking for food. They have closed all places of food. Now you're just looking for whatever it means. You see, because you miss the time of marriage. Marrying only is marrying a second wife or marrying a second husband. In the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 11 and 12, Mark chapter 10, verse 11 and 12, and he said unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committed adultery. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committed adultery. So you can see, you are marrying a second wife, you are committing adultery. And we know that no adulterer has any part in the kingdom of heaven. You have left your first wife and, and get married to a second woman. Maybe to join as a second woman. You are one flesh with your first wife, but not with a second woman. One flesh with only one woman. Adam had only Eve. Adam was not one flesh with every woman. No, only Eve. So you have to be one flesh with only one woman until the woman dies. So if you if the woman is alive and you go to marry another, you are committing adultery. Or else you just drive to the woman and say, I can stay, I can stay. You may not be able to endure. God is the judge. If God knows that you place stubbornness, he may not give you the grace to endure the temptations of the devil because you play pride or you leave your husband 
and say, I can stay. Make sure it is because the fault is not with you. Make sure the fault is not with you. Make sure God is witness. And you carry the church, a godly church, along with you to be witness that that is actually an act you can take. Otherwise, you are opening danger for your life. For the man himself that you have left, because he can be tempted into immorality and you carry the guilt. And for yourself too, you might not be able to stand. And then you miss heaven. So, marrying wrongly is marrying somebody else's wife. It's marrying a second wife. Marrying a second husband. In the book of Luke chapter, six, chapter 16, verse 18. Luke chapter 16, verse 18. Whoso put it away his wife and married another committed adultery. And whosoever married her that is put away from her husband committed adultery. You marry a woman that the husband has driven away. You marry a woman that has married a man before. You are committing adultery. Now, I want you to take note of this. Not all the people that come up here and are doing ushering, that are singing in the choir, that are doing preaching, doing this, are real Christians without fault. What? The case we are handling now, one of the cases we are handling now, concerns a sister that was an usher, in, see, doing usher, doing international conferences. And a brother saw the sister and got married to the sister. We just married last year. Just married last year. And uh, trouble came, came up in the marriage. He is now discovering that the sister who was doing ushering here and passed through the marriage committee, wedded in the church, gave a wrong testimony about herself. She had been married before. But in holiness of our movement, sealed the, 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 the truth. We are still battling with the matter. So, you can find a person like that. You are marrying somebody's wife. Make sure you verify that person. Make sure the church helps you verify that woman. Verify the man. I knew that when somebody wanted to marry a person from Chad Republic, I had to send right to Chad to fight uh, because the Chad man is here in Nigeria. We don't know whether in Chad you have married. You want to come and marry our daughter here and then we send her to hell because he's marrying a man that has married before. We had to send to child to get to his family to check up there what testimony they have of their child, whether the man had married before in child republic or no. Until we got the evidence, he had not married. Before we allow him, make sure you check well. There is danger of marrying wrongly. Hellfire. You say, you do not know, Abimelech said, I didn't know, God said, although you didn't know, death is hanging on you, except you release the woman. What about those who didn't know and have died? To straight to hell. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Therefore, my son, my daughter, make sure you make proper investigation. Check it up well. Not just love. Go beyond love. Up truth too. Let us not let us love in truth and in action. Let us not word, love in word only, but in deed and in truth verify it so that's what we have to say again what is wrong marriage is marrying without due process parental consent dowry payment or defiling yourself on the marital bed when in your courtship meeting, sleeping yourself with, together. Marrying 
carrying a woman to stay with going into a man to stay with him in the name of marriage and your parents are not aware dowry has not been paid the man has not been taken to your parents he went to your parents and didn't make any agreement with them I'm going to make a promise that I'm coming back, I'm coming back I didn't come again you are not married and now you are there committing fornication dangerous dangerous you are there committing fornication because he stole you from your parents Joseph said they stole me and have brought me to Egypt but my father is not aware they stole me so that is what has happened to you the thing to do is to go back to your parents make agreement with them let your father be willing to release you to him and say I release you her, my daughter to you go and marry her, go and marry him and let him come and pay the dowry letter then that becomes marrying on credit that is acceptable you can't send that woman away again she remains your wife until you die even if she stays in your house for one month as long as there was a release by the parents saying take her we have agreed come back later and pay dowry marriage is sealed dowry paid or not paid dowry has become a debt that you have to settle you married on credit you must pay the debt however many years you must pay it and if you don't pay the debt before the rapture comes or you die you're not going to heaven because the bible says oh no man anything you are negligent you say i don't have money are you eating you don't have land to sell you don't have property you don't have work to go and do you have not taken your life seriously so because you have not paid the dowry of your wife you are going to hell oh no man anything this is um, what it means by marrying wrongly again marrying on contract what they do in western countries because you need documents somebody will come to you and say you have you have the documents of this country you are considered a citizen and the law is whoever marries a citizen shall be granted the citizen of that country so marry me so that I can get certificate after you have married me and I get the certificate you can go back it's very dangerous because you follow the process of marriage and you get married you start sleeping with yourself the court has joined you in marriage and of course if this thing happens among uh, the white men who are in the western world who don't have whose parents don't bother about their marriage it is real marriage that has taken place because what happens in the real marriage the parents don't bother it's only in africa and places where they recognize the fatherhood that is if father, father's consent is not sought dowry is not paid even if the court whether them we call we cancel that it is not still marriage but then you are a liar you're a liar to the to the government of the nation you're a liar i must do your restitution you're a liar what shall you profit a man to gain money or profit a woman to gain money and lose her own soul because she's a liar you tell lies that you're a man's wife you are not just because you're looking for money this is marrying wrongly again being a concubine or keeping a concubine being a concubine or keeping a concubine a man big man where the man comes to pick you and rents a house for you and is coming to you as a concubine and you say it's my husband which husband the man has his wife that is evil 
he, it was when Solomon backslidden, backslidden that he was doing those concubine business. Was he satisfying them? Even the 700 wives, was he not promoting immorality? He couldn't satisfy them. It means go and seek for your satisfaction anywhere you can get it. And Solomon tempted those 700 women and wasted 300 concubines. So you can't be a concubine, and that's not marriage. No, that is not marriage. You can't put a lady somewhere and be visiting her. It's not marriage. That's wrong marriage. It's evil. Again, marrying by charm. Marrying by charm. In Acts of Apostles, chapter 8, verse 9, to verse Acts of Apostles, chapter 8, verse Nine to verse eleven. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying. This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because that of a long time, of a long, of long time, he had bewitched them with sorceries. You go to the witch doctor and collect a charm to charm a person, a spell to use on a person and get the heart of that person to you. Yes, that's false love. Lying love. It will not last. A time will come. It will not last. And that man will come to himself. And hatred. The type of hatred is going to hate you will be more than the love you receive from him falsely. Or that woman will come to a time that he will wake up and will hate you with the hatred that you will not recover from. It happened somewhere here in, uh, in, in, in Abuja. A woman came into a man, a man's life, who had his wife and children, and charmed this man to the point that the man drove away his wife to the wife was staying in the neighboring compound. While for years he was staying with this woman, this new wife did not consider his wife nor his children because he has been charmed. A spell had been on him. He had been bewitched for many years. He had even gotten children also with this woman. But one day, the, the power of the charm faded away in this man. So, as he was in the room, this second wife walked in and said, Who are you? What are you coming to do here? Who? who? I am your wife. What, what do you say? I've not known you. I have my wife. Where is my wife? Uh -uh. Where is my wife? Get out of this place. I said, Get out. You're not my wife. Where is my wife? The wife was in the backyard. He went and got his wife. Ah, why are you people here? <laughs> Can you see? Is that hard to get married? He brought back his wife and children. An enemy had done this. Is it what you'll be going to do? You're listening to herbalists, witch doctors, charmers, soothsayers, fortune tellers, diviners, to give you husband, to give you wife, that is marrying wrongly. God is not involved in such marriage. God is not involved. Now, what is the prospect of marrying wrongly? Why do you think people marrying wrongly? Why do you even think that 
among you sitting here, there will still be people that will marry wrongly. Despite a message like this that God has asked me to give you. Number one, scarce believers in the church. We have scarce believers among the men and the women. True Christians are very few. Very few. That is why some go for unbelievers. If you want to marry a Christian, it's the, it is not easy. So, women can run into many, many uh, to a man. Many women can run into a man. Just accept that you have a husband. Look at it in the book of Isaiah, chapter 4, verse 1. Isaiah, chapter 4. I read verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. You see, the people are conscious of their reproach. Hey, people are asking me, are you, how are you, how are your children? How are you, madam, madam, mama, mama, mommy. Sir, look at, this is embarrassment. They are calling me and I'm not married. So, you are looking for every means. The men are not there. They are very few. Or else it is the women. Real, really converted Christian women are not there. Or very few. They are not enough for the men available. As a result, you will not even be thinking to wait to marry in God's will. You will not think it. Let me marry in God's will. Which one is God's will here now? It's only three sisters that are here. Everybody is struggling. If I'm waiting for God's will, and God has not said anything now, will I get a wife? So, this is one thing that turns people away from marrying in God's will. But why few men? Why few women? The church is not evangelizing. The church is not going out to bring in the men. The church is not going out to bring in the women. They are there in the unbelieving world. They are there in the sinful world. They are there in the offices, in the market. They are there in schools. You are not going out to evangelize them. That is why we don't have them in the church. And the implication of it is you don't have a wife to marry that is truly born again. You don't have a husband to marry that is truly born again. And it becomes a temptation to you. That is why we must obey God in the church. Go and preach the gospel. Go and win souls. Go and do it. You'll be bringing a husband in. You'll be bringing a wife in to provide husbands and wives from church members who are true Christians. That is it. What is it? What is it? The propensity of marrying wrongly. The prospect. It is undue hunger and test for marriage among the youths due to sexual drive. Undue hunger. You want to marry now. It's now. Now. Tomorrow, I'm going to take you to marrying in God's way. You're going to see it in another dimension tomorrow. And I pray it will work in your life. Yes. Now, you want to marry now, 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 now. No rest. Now. She please me well. I need the man now. That is the reason why you can, you, you, you can go off the way. In Proverbs chapter 27, 
verse 7. Proverbs 27, verse 7. The full corn, I mean the full soul, loaded and honeycomb. But to the hungry, to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. If a person is satisfied, he is under control. He will need choice of what to eat or what not to eat. By the way, he's under control of himself. But to the hungry, anything he can eat it. He can eat anything. Because I need food now. Now. Esau, because of food, he gave up his birthright. So, because of the drive of sex, you want any woman, is she sexable? Can the man, does he have strength to sleep with a woman? That's all I need. Forget about her age. Forget about his age. Forget about uh, any sickness that is in his life. Forget about the fact that he, 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 has, he, has, he is suffering from epilepsy. I say forget. Does she have the woman part in her? I want a woman now. I want a woman now. My body wants a woman now. You, and those things you are eating are bitter. They will affect you tomorrow. Your stomach is looking for it now. They will affect you tomorrow. Exactly. That's how you go to marry a woman, very old woman, because you will be able to satisfy yourself immediately. You go into agreement with any man. With the, you force your parents to open, open way for you. If you don't even want to run, if you don't want to go, it's because of your body. Now, what is causing this bodily tension? Internet, pornography, nudity that is in the environment, the corrupt environment we have, the internet, the thing you watch there, the, 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 the uh, pornography you watch there. Sometimes actual display of sex that you go to watch puts your body under tension. You need it now. You need it now. This is the reason why you are looking for marriage. Some of you, the, the place where you, you have your accommodation is risky because he, they play halotry in that place. There's a wayward woman that men come in turn to her and is disturbing you. You're looking for your own now. They're staring you up now. Instead of leaving the place, I want a wife, I want a husband, I want a wife, 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 like mosquito blow, blowing your ears. You go and marry. He that hasten it with his feet, sin it. You're hastening to marry because you're contaminated. You're watching internet. You're doing, you're, you're doing masturbation. You're watching pornography. You're doing this, you're doing that. It has corrupted your mind. All you're looking for, I want to marry, I want to marry. Now you carry bitter things. That's why you marry wrongly. That's why you don't have time to investigate. Ah, the woman is beautiful. Ah, she finished from university. The man has a car. The, 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 in fact, the man, he has a house. The man, the man, that is how and why you go off. Again, parental pressure on believers. Parental pressure in Judges chapter 16. I read Judges chapter 16 verse 16 and 17. I'm talking to you how pressure looks like. Pray Joe. And it came to pass when she praised him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath no, not come a razor upon my head for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. For, for my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me. 
and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And exactly, exactly, the woman did so. Verse 19. And she made him to sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistine be upon thee, Samson. And he woke up, woke out, and he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord had departed from him. But the Philistine took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house. Can you see? Pray job! You're passing through pray job your, by your parents. Your colleagues have all married. You, what are you doing here? Leave this house. You're a big girl enough to, to get money of your own. Leave. Your mother is the one driving you. Your father is the one mocking you. You can't go to any sister's house. You go there and say, look at you. He says, sister. You are saying you are a sister. The people are marrying your own. You say, sister. Get out from this place. Are you eating, sister? Huh? So, they are putting pressure. Instead of holding yourself, you are, their pressure is overcoming you. Instead of taking their pressure to God in prayer, you are yielding to their pressure. Now, you wait, you wait on the roadside. Who is passing? You started doing s -s 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 -s. Because of pressure, you are picking anyone. You are picking any leper. You are picking any madman. You are picking any insane man. You are picking any wizard. You are picking just to satisfy pressure. Except you know how to overcome pressure. Except you know how to esteem God above man. Except you despise the voice of man. You will go off. Reason why people marry uh, off the course. And the next one is bewitchment. When you play carelessly into a man's hand and the man bewitches you, you are just following now. Whatever he does with you is okay. You can't say no again. He has bewitched you. You are going into wrong marriage. It may even be a man that has, has his wife, but you played into his hand. You played in to his hand. You were not careful as a believer, as a Christian, born again. Because of your carelessness, they caught you. And you, man, you played into her hand. You played into her hand. You started opening up love for an unbeliever. Laughing, beating her, beating her, rubbing her. Hey! And then she said, it will work on him. Go and shake him. Go and give this food to him. Go and do this. And they caught you. You're gone. You're just following sheepishly. How is this man? <laughs> a story was told of a professor that a small girl in the university got hold of that professor and the professor became her boyfriend. And the, this girl could drag the professor. They were writing exam in the class. Because of the love of this girl that had overwhelmed the professor, he went and wrote the answers and came through the window and passed it over to the small girl and they caught the professor. They did what? What did they do? They caught the professor giving answers to a small girl. Hey, professor. <laughs> First degree. Do you know who is a professor? If somebody has gotten a first degree, he goes back again and gets master's degree, goes back again and gets doctorate degree, 
and to get doctoral degree is not an easy thing. And then as a doctor, he has to serve for many years and become an associate professor all through before he becomes a professor. Hey, a small girl. A small girl. Add a girl plus demon equals to professor. <laughs> I'm telling you. That small girl humble professor. And people laughed at the professor. Professor. Prof! See what a, a great name came into a waste paper basket because of immorality. Because of a small girl. And because of charm. Bewitchment. You dance into their hand. You dance into that lady's hand. You didn't remember Jesus. The Holy Spirit left you. And then they took you. Now I'm going to tell you the danger of marrying wrongly. The sorrows of marrying wrongly. The griefs of marrying wrongly. I had the story long time in those days. In Yola, Adam Austed. A believer, a sister, known to be a child of God, whatever is her reason, she got into the hand of an unbeliever, married an unbeliever. The torture was much. The suffering was much. The regret was much. She, as I heard, started speaking to people as one speaking through the window. My brethren, hold yourself and be patient. Don't rush for marriage. Don't say I'm getting old. The sorrows of marrying and marrying an unbeliever is so great. It's better you never marry at all. I'm suffering here. And I cannot break this marriage. I have married until the man dies. And I'm not a wish to kill him. I'm in trouble. Let your lesson. My sisters. The sorrow of marrying an unbeliever. What is it? Number one, the risk of backsliding from the truth and righteousness of God by the power of the marriage partner. The risk. I've told you. Let me read it again. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 3 and 4. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 3 and 4 the Bible says neither shall thou, shall thou make marriages with them thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son for they will turn away thy son from following me that they may serve other gods so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy this suddenly. They will turn you away. But some of you will boast of your strength. They say, no, can't do me anything. I will remain in Christ. I will be, I'll continue in the church. I will continue evangelism. Hey, you will continue in the church, continue evangelism. Then you will overcome the word of God. And it came to pass when Solomon was old, no strength again. Do you think you'll be having strength all the time? The roads that pass through you, going to distant places, are they all smart or they climb hills and descend valleys? They climb mountains and descend? That is how life. Sometimes in your Christian life, you may be weak, you may be dry. What about such times? Sometimes in your Christian life, you may not pray as much as you used to pray. What about such times? Sometimes in your Christian life, you may be low in reading the word of God. What about such times? The devil in his evil doesn't get weak. In your time, where you, you come low, the enemy takes over. 
a vehicle has been pursuing another. Then it came to pass that as that vehicle ran, a vehicle was in the front of it. It didn't have a way to overtake it. The one running after him overtook him. Full stop. The devil that is running after you is a blockade will come in your way. When you will not run fast to go, he will overtake you. So hear the word of God. Marrying a woman that is not a believer, then learn lesson to, from Ahab in the book of First Kings chapter 21 verse from verse, verse 25. First Kings 21 verse 25. The Bible tells us here on Ahab saying but there was none like unto Ahab which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. Verse 26 and he did very abominably in following idols according to all things as did the Amorites whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Jezebel dealt with Ahab. Taught Ahab to eat human beings. No more than, more than that. Drink human blood. More than that. Taught Ahab to kill human beings as many to kill prophets. Jezebel. You don't know what that unbelieving woman will do in your life. You will siphon God from you. She will siphon God. She will deprive you of God. She will turn you to an angry man. She will turn you to a thief in the working place by her demand, by her bewitchment. She will turn you to a piece of bread. The Lord told you. The Lord told you. Don't marry an unbeliever. I am not in her. She's not my daughter. My spirit is not in her. I am not going to help her. Don't marry an unbeliever. She can be a drunkard. To your shame. A drunkard. And on the street when she sees you, oh my husband, in drunkenness, I would use dr drunken hands to <laughs> to embrace you in the presence of other drunkards. It's my husband. It's my husband. Then you will know that the Lord really told you, don't marry an unbeliever. You will know. That's what we're saying. Very dangerous. Yes. The man. Oh. The man can leave your marry another one, a woman, another woman. Marry three. And be say, go to your house. I give you three rooms. I'll be coming one by one. He said, me. I'm sharing a man with three, two other women. Thank God your own is only two. Others on a ten. It's an unbeliever. And you're not supposed to leave that place. Because the Bible says, submit to your husband. Do you be an unbeliever? Maybe gradually tracing your holy life. Meaning live holy before him. He might also be born again tomorrow. Uh, you means you have to wear patience, eat patience, drink patience, sleep on the bed of patience. Wow! You, you got it. Others suffer it because it was before they believed in Jesus and they have grace. Their comfort is if I knew the Lord, I wouldn't have done this. You, you will say what? What will you be comforting yourself with? What will you take to God for comfort? That's what the Lord said. I should tell you this. Don't marry an unbeliever. Again, 
The danger of missing marital pleasures from God is there when you are married to an unbeliever. You wanted, uh, is it not for sex you are looking for? The man is no more interested. You, you, he has finished with you. The rule among Muslims is that he should marry four. And now you, um, you have married to a Muslim, remaining three. Remaining three wives. You are among them. What an abuse. A child of God, born again. Born again. Now I is among three Muslim women. Because you are careless in your life. Standing online to collect from one husband. Yes. Or else, what about these sicknesses of HIV? All these uh, sexually transmitted diseases. You're in the risk of it. Because your husband is an unbeliever. Your husband is an unbeliever. An unbeliever can eat excreta. An unbeliever can sleep with mad women looking for money. An unbeliever can be homo homosexual sleeping with men. So what will you say? The thing is too bad. Wait patiently for the Lord. You are not born for sorrow. God will show his glory in your life. Wait patiently for the Lord. You are not born to be destroyed. Why? Why don't you enjoy the real life? The love life, the real intimacy with men, intimacy with women, to the pleasures of your life as God meant it. It will be when you get a true Christian, born again, that fears God. Not the one that will say, Turn your anus. No. Not the one that will say, Lick my private part. No. I'm telling you this word of God, child of God. God says I should tell you. He doesn't want to miss you. He doesn't want to miss you. Yes. He doesn't want to miss you. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17 and 19. Isaiah 48 verse 17 and 19. It goes of 17 to 19 rather. Thus said the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandment. Then hath thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Thy seed also had been as the son and the offspring of thy burials like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off, nor destroyed from before me. Oh, that you wait for me and hear my word. Don't marry an unbeliever. Your peace in Mary will have been wonderful. Your righteousness will have ascended high in marriage. But Corruption, anger, fight, battle, malice, hey, tearing clothes is what is going on now. For there is no peace, saith my God, unto the wicked. The wicked are like the troubled sea, that cast forth men and death. There is no peace, saith my God. You have become wicked now because you disobey God. So please. You have not yet married. This is what people who have married are suffering. You may say, our oh, unbelievers are not suffering like that. Not unbelievers who have heard what you have heard, you are hearing now. God knows how to judge people. Yes, you abuse God. You despise him. Even when he told you the truth, you laughed at him. Will you have the same judgment with unbelievers who didn't even know him? Some of them will come and repent later and plead with him to forgive them. I didn't know, oh Lord. Had I known this, I wouldn't have done it. So, you see it now. Your life would have been wonderful, but you couldn't hear. You couldn't hear. Again, you will have to bear 
with their sins. You would suffer from their sins. The sin of your exposed. The sin of your husband. The sin of your wife. What is his sin? Just common drunkenness. Let's, we don't know the grade of the drunkenness. What will be happening to the mouth of the drunkard? And that man wants to kiss you. With the odor of kankai. <laughs> my brother, my sister. The thing is not easy. <laughs> With the mouth full of his bring your mom, not my bring your mom. <laughs> You'll be busy turning like this. Turning like this. If you don't turn away, gives you bah what, what I I said you should bring your mouth. He said, oh. You will remember today. But I pray the Lord will help you. Amen. You will never marry an unbeliever in Jesus' name. Hey. I had something for somebody was telling me that there was a woman married to her husband with children. Whatever happened, she went to the to the next door and married a man there too. He went to the next door. So he is serving her husband and that man in the same compound and sharing nights between the husband and the man. And this husband is a, a member of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Oh. Polyandry. I've been hearing, I heard it of what I didn't know it existed in reality. And that the man, the second man, the woman married doesn't have money. So it is the money of her husband. This is our brother that he is, she is using to cook food for, for the two of them. To provide for the two of them. You have married a woman. And this woman said one man is not enough for her. He's an unbeliever. And the brother has learned scripture that says, don't put your wife away. Let me manage. So that I too can eat. But she's distributing herself. That is her life. That is her life. If you say you don't want, you will stay idle. Temptation will come to go and look for another woman. You have sinned. You are going to hell. To him, the person going to hell is my wife and that man. Me, I'm not going. I am a believer serving Jesus. A member of Holiness Revival Movement. Sincere and true. But I have to be patient. What if she had married in Christ? Will she suffer this? Don't marry an unbeliever. You don't know what, it, what that your unbelieving wife will do. You don't know. If she's a witch, she'll be cooking human flesh in the same pot that she's cooking food for you. You say, huh? How did this happen? I pray you won't say it like that. Amen. But that's the Lord telling you. Make up your mind. Don't marry an unbeliever. Check him well. Check her well. Check her very well. Make sure she's a Christian. Don't run. He that has sinned with his feet, sinned. What about the diseases of her body? The diseases of her body. What about the diseases of his own body? You will inherit it. There will be transfer. Let's keep these signals together. Or else, you will spend your time treating a sick person. The plagiarism you really need in a woman, you can't find. The plagiarism you need in a man, you can't find. He doesn't even have a strong body for you. But God will have given you a selection from him if you work patiently. 
God would have given you the right person in choice for you if you had waited patiently. You carry diseases. Along with you, can you imagine? What about the contaminated genes that she is carrying from her parents, which shall now enter into the body of your children? And maybe her parents carry a particular sickness, a particular trait that is bad. Your children will inherit it. The genes of their mother. And you suffer. You didn't allow the Lord to choose for you. Who sees everything, which tries everything. For he tried the heart. He tried the blood. He tried the bones. He knows everything. He knows which one should come to you. You didn't allow him. You run ahead of him. You have got what you are looking for. And now you can't have the pleasure. He that laughs last, laughs best. Why didn't you wait for the last position so that you will laugh best? Why didn't you control yourself? And wait, and wait again. In thy patience, possess ye your soul. You will possess your soul if you are patient. Yes, the danger of marrying a witch or a wizard. Hey, that's another thing. With all our description, we have not yet fully described who a witch is. We have not yet fully described who a wizard is because a lot of the activity is still in darkness, still in secret. How will life be? You are told your wife is a witch? Your husband is a wizard? How would that be? And these witches, they initiate almost all their children, except the one that God himself is protecting. Otherwise, they want to bring all of them into witchcraft. Your children, precious children, become witches and wizards through their mother or through their father. you gave birth to snakes and scorpions because you couldn't wait for Jesus to do good in your life. You couldn't wait for Jesus to order your path. The path of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. You never waited. The devil took you over and directed you to where you will suffer, in fact, accept mercy forever. And there is the possibility of losing your God given gifts and calling because this unbeliever is always on you. The devil is himself the one now that is giving her instruction. Or giving him instruction. Do like this. Do like this. Do like this. Do like this. You must well tighten your belt. Otherwise, ah, your mouth cannot speak about God again. When they have carried you away captivity and demand of you a song, you will answer them, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You are now in strange environment, under strange hands. How do you do the Lord's ministry? How do you run errands for God in this strange land, in this strange hand? The Lord gave you gifts. The Lord gave you calling. You couldn't wait for him to give you a wife. You couldn't wait for him to give you a husband. Wasting the grace of God. And with all this, you will find yourself coming face to face with the temptation of a second marriage. Many evangelists have done it. Many pastors have done it. They go back to scripture again and 
and check the scripture. Is there no way? Come. Is there no way? Please, let's go to Matthew again. Check the scripture. Is there no way a person can marry when, with these stubborn women? You know, God knows that they are stubborn. God cannot allow us to stay in with one wife. There must be a scripture somewhere. <laughs> you are looking for a scripture somewhere to die. You are looking for a way out. Prevention is better than cure. It could have been prevented if you had the voice of God. It could have been prevented. You would have been prevented from such a terrible man if you had had the voice of God when you were growing up at the time you had not yet married you have been prevented from such a terrible woman it's better to sit on housetop in a shining day than to sit in the room with a brawling woman with a quarrelsome woman you want to sleep she wakes you up hear what I'm saying hear what I'm saying I say here you won't sleep you won't sleep start up start up you won't sleep before you know you say woman if you don't leave I will slap you hey Christianity has gone I'm telling you they're doing purposely to remove it you didn't hear the word of God and finally the possibility of ending in hellfire after you have preached it after you have heard the message, you still go there. And you begin to regret forever. You begin to regret forever. Say, hey, I missed it. And I cannot, there's no second chance. I have died. So, my brother, my sister, my daughters, my sons, take marriage seriously. Go tell me, give attendance to this thing. Give them attention. And the message you will preach, one of the messages, preach the danger of marrying an unbeliever, of marrying wrongly. I have preached it now. May God bless it. Receive it, it came from God. Receive it, it came from God. Receive it, it came from God. Stand up and tell God to direct you by it. Make a promise to God. It should help you. You will not turn away from the word of God. You will not turn away from his path of righteousness. Tell him to help you. Help you. To help you, dry bones shall rise again. I say, dry bones shall rise again. Your hands, yeah, Jehovah, you are able to do all things. You're able, able. I say, dry bones shall rise again. Dead bones shall live again. Yeah, Jehovah. Dry bones shall rise again. Shall live again. Yeah, Jehovah is able. Now, listen to me. God is missing true preachers because of marriage problems. The church is cooling down 
because of marriage problem. Satan is getting the children of God destroyed by giving them wrong marriage partners. But today, let something new happen to you. Yeah. Tell God, first, recover yourself in righteousness. That's what you will do. Then ask God, I will not marry an unbeliever. You will give me the righteous wife as I am righteous. Open your mouth and pray. You first must come back to Jesus. Recover your Christian life. Get God well. Recover Jesus. Is then you will be ready. You will be able. You will be able to pray through to a righteous wife, a righteous husband. name we pray. Some of you are not born again. Some of you are backsliding. You need to be born again. Otherwise, you are an unbeliever. God will not want to give you a precious wife to marry. God will not want to give you a precious woman to marry. And a precious husband to marry. Why? Are you his child? Are you not satisfying yourself? Are you not satisfied? Yourself? We are praying for somebody. God, give this person a wife. It's a brother. God, give this person a wife. God says he is helping himself. Ah, he asked him to give me a wife. He's committing immorality and helping himself. How do I give him a wife? Is he my child? You will need to give your life to Jesus and recover from backsliding. So become a child of God. You want to become a child of God to recover yourself in Christ. Raise up your hand. That's the first thing to do. Raise up your hand. Because that's what we say to you. We reconcile you with Jesus. Is then you will have the blessings of life. Now come forward here for prayer. Just move forward. Yes. You must first reconcile with Jesus. You must first give your life to Jesus. You must first believe in the Lord Jesus. You must first repent of your sins. Otherwise, how can God give you to somebody as a husband or as a wife? He cannot give a dog. He said, I cannot give uh, 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 my, a precious thing to dogs. I cannot. Just start coming. Don't waste your thing. Don't waste the goodness you. He has talked to you. Don't respond. He has talked to you. Respond. Come and give your life to Jesus. Move forward. Respond. Respond. As you come, plead with Jesus to receive you. Tell him you are ready to belong to him. You are ready. You are ready now. You are ready now. Otherwise, if you are not a child of God, how will he use you? If you are not a child of God, how will he give you a husband? Don't give holy things to dogs. That's what God is saying. Don't give holy things to dogs. You yourself, you know how you, you go about in immorality. You know it. How will you think that God will give you a precious child to go and spoil that child? To go and turn that child to witchcraft? Come and renounce your sin. Come and repent of your sins. Yes. Sing this song to me, with me, everybody. Into my heart. Into. Sing it, sing it. Invite Jesus. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay.
lay hand upon your heart and say, Into my heart. Into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into day, come into stay. for pardon, pray for pardon, pray for forgiveness, pray for pardon, pray for forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Tell God to pardon you. You will serve him. That you, you repent. You repent. Tell him you repent of your sins. Tell him you repent. You will serve the Lord now. You will serve Jesus with all your heart. Thank you, Lord. Wash their sins away. Wash their sins away. Wash their sins away. Wash their sins away. Give them a new life. Give them a new life. Let them be your children. So that you can give them as marriage. Give them in marriage to your beloved children. Send your beloved children to marry them. Children. Your children, wash them from their sins. Wash them from their sins. Wash them from their, from their sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, you have drawn these people. You want to do them good. I'm asking that you will forgive their sins. The power of God from heaven that does miracles will do miracle of change in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. My God, whatever the devil is doing in their lives, by the power of the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary, let that thing be destroyed in their lives. Let the devil lift his light hand from their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Come unto them. Let them be your children. Give them a new life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray.